going home and reading up on on like this law and stuff that they or like the charges charges they had charged on me or what they had charged me with terroristic threatening and and trying to find a way that I could show them that that wasn't what I was doing but I just couldn't because they said that that was the law and that's what they have to do no matter what that they can't make any exceptions the adults get to make all the assumptions and they get to make all the rules that, that the teenagers have to abide by when the teenagers are the ones who understand each other the best it's like uh, my teacher doesn't come and hang out with me at my house and doesn't know all about me and doesn't know what I talk to my friends about and I just feel like naturally we're we're innocent but the adults are the ones who who corrupt kids like you never see a a, a a kid or a teenager launch a nuclear missile at somebody or start a war I'm Tommy Anderson I live in Jenkins Kentucky a small town in the Appalachian coal fields I was recently expelled from school on charges of terroristic threatening. I put up some of my artwork on flyers in my high school. They were just drawings making fun of techno music and video games. I wanted to see people being more accepting to different ideas whether or not they could understand it at first glance. There aren't many places to be creative or talk about your ideas and thoughts where I live. I wanted a place where people could speak more openly about things. Before I knew it, I was in the principal's office being told my ideas were terroristic. I could understand that after September 11th, people were more afraid of terror in their communities. But I quickly learned there's less of an understanding of what terrorism is, and more of a fear. They put the school on lockdown and called the police. I was told that my drawings were codes for bombs and terror attacks. We've had a zero tolerance policy for some things here in the district ever since they became issues. Uh, one is on uh, drug possession, drug usage, uh, intoxication from alcohol, uh, uh, terroristic threatening, those kind of, anything that endangers students and themselves or others. Our board has had a zero tolerance uh, stand on that. During the expulsion here, they told me some of the things that they, that they thought my signs meant. Like uh, I had this, like a fake band called Millennium X and they said that that could have been the name of a bomb that I was going to uh, detonate at, at, that, at that time that I had wrote above the band name. My meaning in putting up those signs was to make, to make an alternative to the, uh, to the school newspaper at Jenkins. And uh, during the expulsion hearing, they told me, oh, you could have came and talked to us. But I was like, well, it's too late now. And... Uh, I've I've been expelled and uh, I'm supposed to go to court. I think, at least they said it was because what I did was a felony. Yeah, you gotta be individuals when you're in school. You gotta you gotta be who you are. And I think that is really squelching the way a lot of kids might be. You know, a little bit more freedom, a little bit feel a little bit more comfortable at school because they have enough strain, stress and strain at school right now. I understand kids have a lot more to go through than I did when I was in school. But when they, uh, you have to admit out there it's a lot tougher than what it used to be. After the whole ordeal of expulsion, I spent most of my days asleep and spent my nights making six packs and stocking the cooler at the gas station where I worked. Being called a terroristic threat changes how you perceive yourself. I had a lot of support from my friends and fellow students. Them all signing the petition really made me feel like I was understood. With so many people behind me, I felt like I had a chance. But instead of a hundred some odd kids who stood up for me, a council of a few adults made a decision about my future. I heard about a similar situation in Boyd County, Kentucky. Students tried to start a gay straight alliance, also known as the GSA, in their school, but were repeatedly harassed and shut down while trying to start their club. Eventually, some of the students involved had to drop out from the stories I heard of hatred against gay people, the problem was obvious. I was sitting in class and in the GSA when you came to the meetings you got these little rainbow buttons that you could wear in your shirts or on your bags or whatever and it said ally and it was on top of a rainbow. And I had that on my backpack 
and I walked into class and there was a bigger guy sitting in the back and I sat in the back, we had assigned seats, and I walked to the back of my row and sat down and he said, you might as well have, I can't say it because <laughs> I don't cuss, he said, you might as well have an effing fag hanging off the back of your backpack if you're going to wear that button. And I didn't say anything because in the club we didn't say anything to anybody. We said our opinion, but that was it. We weren't mean to people. We didn't yell at people. We abided by the rules. And he looks at the guy beside him and says, I can't wait to hunting season. And I thought it was over. So I started doing what I was doing again. And he said, why? And he said, because I can't wait to take all the effing faggots in the backwoods and shoot them. The community and school were afraid of homosexuality and were halting the growth of these teenagers' identity. Their fear caused a new kind of fear for some of the students involved with the GSA. Learning about their situation, I realized that there was a larger problem. In many schools, kids aren't able to be individuals or express their ideas without fear of being misunderstood. Boyd County was a situation um, where a number of students were experiencing uh, a tremendous amount of harassment at the hands of other students and other teachers as well. And so what they, part of what they wanted to do in an attempt to sort of deal with this uh, discrimination and, and harassment that they were experiencing is that they wanted to form a club. It wasn't just a gay straight alliance, it was an anybody alliance. It, was, it didn't matter if you were gay or straight or lesbian or who cares. It was people just getting together to be together. The students were denied their right to have their club several times and contacted the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU. The school was told by the ACLU that the students were permitted by law to have their club. The GSA was granted temporary club status. The school thought it was a better idea to have no clubs at all rather than have the GSA among them. So they banned them all. Informally, the football team, the drama club, and all the other clubs were able to meet without question. This launched a four-year legal battle involving the school, the students, parents, churches, and the ACLU. William and Libby are part of a group of students who are still fighting to get the school to uphold court mandates for sensitivity training and to support the GSA. I had a teacher that I respected very, very much, and um, we used to discuss we used to discuss political science in her class and she wasn't a political science teacher. And I never thought I would get retaliation from this teacher. And I was joking around with another student and I said, well, did you see me on the front page of the newspaper? Because we were on the front page of the newspaper about 86 times. I said, did my picture look good? And he started laughing, he said, yeah. And she said, well, your picture may have looked good, but you're going to hell. So that ended my relationship with that teacher. I didn't want to be someone who quit school or anything like that but you didn't I didn't want to go back to a school system where I was harassed every day and then nothing was done about it you know what you're doing is right but it's such an intolerant environment you don't know what to do and so I did the one thing that I knew I could control in an uncontrollable situation so I quit regrettably I posted some flyers in my school. William and Libby wanted to start a club. We both wanted to be in a school that was an easier place to get along in, where we could speak without the fear of being shut out for our ideas. But in turn, we were given what we tried to escape, misunderstanding, intolerance, and the loss of a decent education. We did a satellite link with our superintendent of schools. It was a very interesting conversation. He called us terrorists. Our school superintendent called us terrorists. And school systems need to understand that the Constitution does not stop at the front door of schools. It does involve equality and you, you have to give fairness across the board. So my advice to school systems would be to really, you know, analyze their procedures on dealing with things and really understand that I believe kids are becoming more outspoken as the times go on and they're starting to stand up to more school systems and my advice would be to really analyze your procedures and dealing with things and really start to accept that the world doesn't stop at the schoolroom doors.